Hey, thanks for watching another video from WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. Today's video is about getting some good practice TIG welding. The best practice you can get with TIG welding by far is TIG welding aluminum sheet metal and stacking beads. I know that's a pretty strong statement, but here's why it's true. Because you can get seat time with a little bit of money. One piece of 4 by 8 inch or roughly that uh, 11 gauge aluminum, it can be 3003, 6061, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter the kind, but you can get lots of seat time just by stacking beads. And the reason, uh, reason for aluminum is because with steel it grays up and oxidizes and doesn't weld the same after two or three beads. Aluminum, as long as you let it cool for just a little while, you can weld bead after bead after bead. So get you a piece of 11 gauge aluminum and run an edge weld around the edges first. That's good practice all by itself. And then just start stacking beads. Start on the end and uh, start stacking them halfway over each other and it gives you a line to follow. You can also practice building lugs like this. This is excellent practice for building up a lug on a, a broken lug off an aluminum uh, house, uh, transmission case or something like that. Just practice and practice stacking beads. Practice stacking dimes by moving the torch about an eighth of an inch and adding rod about it once a second. That will give you a ripple every eighth of an inch and give you the stack of dimes look that everybody's so crazy about. Stack them. You don't have to let it cool very often. Just a few seconds or a little shot with an air nozzle and you can get right back in there. You don't have to wire brush between passes. You don't have to waste your time grinding and wire brushing. You can get seat time, arc time, under the helmet time. That's what's important. Stack them left to right, stack them right to left. Practice different ways of feeding the rod, practice different ways of holding the torch. You're not going to put a blue ribbon on this thing when you're done and use it for a trophy. You're throwing it in a scrap. So don't be afraid to try some new stuff. Don't be afraid to make some mistakes. Learn from your mistakes. This is the time to learn. For just a few dollars, you can probably get a piece of scrap metal uh, for free, actually, and just clean it off a little bit with some acetone or alcohol, give it a quick wire brushing with a stainless brush, and you're ready to go. You can run uh, probably uh, hundreds of beads on this thing. Aluminum lets you know when it gets too hot, the ripples start to go away. So all you got to do is give it a shot with an air nozzle, wait a few minutes, not even a minute actually, and then you're good to go again, and then uh, you can wait just a minute and you'll get your you'll get your distinctly uh, stacked ripples again once the once the metal's cooled off a little bit you might want to get you a heat finger shield uh, you can email me about that through my site if you're interested in one stack them all kinds of different ways but stack them straight don't just go zigzagging stack them on top of each other so you have a straight line so you can practice running straight but if you get bored you can run diagonally and things like that too if you get done you can turn it over, it just starts getting thicker and thicker. You have to preheat it a little bit by running a bead around the edges, but that's good practice, like I said, as well. You can practice again uh, making, building up little lug patterns. Practice building a lug pattern two inches uh, square by an inch high. And, uh, you know, be creative. This is, a, this is a good time to learn. This is good practice for welding on aluminum castings, even though it's sheet metal, because you're actually making a casting out of it by uh, adding all that weld metal on it. All right, a little repeat here. This is the stack of dimes. Look, I don't know why, but NASCAR and all kind of racing industries have gravitated toward the stacked dimes look. It doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean it's a better weld, but that's what people have come to expect a good weld to be. So you might want to learn how to do it. People will think you're a good welder if you can stack dimes. But it's not the only right way. It's not necessarily a better way. It's just what people think is better. If you want to stack your ripples tighter, Add rod more often. Tap the rod in there two or three times a second, and you'll get two or three ripples every uh, eighth inch, and you'll have a whole a whole different looking weld. Not better, not worse, just different. Figure out what you like. Figure out what what uh, what kind of weld signature you want to have, and and go with that. Once again, people tend to like uh, the stack of dimes. Motorcycles, bicycles, mountain bikes. Uh, marine tuna towers and all that all all seem to gravitate toward uh, uh, fairly wide spaced ripples that's what people have come to expect you may want to learn how to do it again the reason for using aluminum is it kind of exaggerates things that go wrong with steel but it also doesn't require cleaning in between passes so you get a lot of seat time a lot of arc time practicing different things and it also kind of exaggerates uh, heat conductivity so you have to work the foot pedal more so and you have to learn to feed that rod 
your hand, your feed, uh, your feed hand will have to learn to catch up and be as skilled as your torch hand. It's always that feed hand that lags behind when you're learning how to try to get better at TIG welding and, and welding aluminum because wire feeds so easily into the puddle will make you have to get better at it. So again, a piece of 11 gauge aluminum, 6061, 3003, 5052, even if you don't know what it is, if you just get it at the scrapyard, it doesn't really matter. It's practice. It'll, it'll weld and it'll teach you how to be a better welder. These skills will translate right over into stainless steel and carbon steel even though you're welding on aluminum, it'll make a better TIG welder out of you. All right, that's today's uh, video. Thanks for watching. Visit WeldingTipsAndTricks.com.